Welcome to the GCN Tech Clinic, where we aim to answer your bike, tech, and cycling-related uh, questions. As ever, you can submit your questions down in the comments section below uh, using the hashtag AskGCNTech, and we'll do our best to answer as many of them as possible within the allotted time. If you're wondering where Alex is this week, well, he's, he's having a much-deserved holiday down in Nice. But, um, well, should be back next week. Anyway, um, first up this week, we have a question from Schweizbat who says, hello tech clinic experts, I have an Ultegra mechanical group set on my bike and consider switching to 105 Di2. However, I can only find full group sets available to purchase and do not understand why I would need to change my current bottom bracket or brake sets. Is it possible to mix Di2 and mechanical components? If yes, which ones can I keep? Um, yeah, I don't know why you're struggling with that. Like you should be able to find like individual bits to buy um, they are for sale. I've just even, I was like, what? what is, what's, that? what's going on here? And double checked it and like, yeah, you, you can find the individual bits you need. Um, the big thing to be aware of is just, I'm assuming that you have mechanical disc brakes um, and that's just the one thing. But yeah, things like your bottom bracket, your cassette, your chain rings, yeah, they're all compatible. Um, obviously you need complete new derailleurs and shifters um, is the main thing that you need to ship, but yeah, you should be able to find different replacements for those. Uh, next up, we have Tommy Manoya, uh, 772, and says, Hi, it would be really cool to hear about your journey towards collecting a proper toolkit. How many trials and errors did you make before ending up with a proper sortiment? Um, the GCN Mega Base tool shed doesn't count. Um, so not advice per se, but like the do's and don'ts, and of course, the juicy bad choices along the way. Uh, I think the main, like the number one tool that you probably buy first is like a good multi-tool and then like some Allen keys. I kind of, yeah, collected things along the way as I've needed them. The, the best thing is like what we've said before, you know, you buy cheap, you buy twice. Like good tools, like park tools, they just last like for your lifetime, you know, they last a really long time. They don't really wear out. So you buy cheap Allen keys, you'll end up rounding bolts because they're soft. You buy like good ones, like the park ones, those other brands too. They, they're just made of harder steel. They're just way better. Like, Allen Keys is a good one. Um, but then the same can be said for a lot of things, like lock ring tools. Again, you get like a harder steel one. It doesn't, it's not cheese. It, yeah, a good one. Um, but yeah, I think what I, I don't have every single tool. I do use the Mega Base tool shed. Uh, but for like a home tool kit, I think the ability to take chains on and off your bike, like chain pliers, um, and also a chain breaker tool, or well, quick linked pliers is what I mean, and um, a chain whip and uh, a lock ring tool and a wrench so that you can remove cassettes and change cassettes and chains. That's really, really useful, as well as Allen keys and uh, Torx keys and a good torque wrench. I mean, the list goes on, but that, that would be the core of what I would say go for first. Um, and then depending on your brakes, maybe you want to get a bleed kit. That's a good investment so that you can keep your brakes tip top and you don't have to rely on a bike shop to do it for you. Uh, next up is Ollie Booth 6138 who says, can I use inner tubes on tubeless ready wheels? Yep, uh, that's a quick one. Uh, Shamend uh, Rask the Veal uh, says, hi Alex and Ollie. When I'm in the smallest cog at the back and back pedal, um, the chain comes off the chain ring. Um, is there any way to stop that? Yeah, don't backpedal. Um, when you have, uh, when you're in the extremities of the cassette um, and the chain line is like exaggerated, so you've got your biggest kind of like deflection of the chain. So the chain's at its biggest angle. If you backpedal, um, it, it, it will often cause the, the chain to derail off, 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 off the cassette. So. You, I mean, you shouldn't be backpedaling, basically, but if you put your chain into a more optimal chain line, um, it, shouldn't, it shouldn't be an issue, but it is kind of a normal thing that happens. So, uh, yeah, just, just be aware of it. Um, Kestrel Rider, like that name, Kestrel Rider 313, says, how does, all, how does one clean the sealant that has been pushed into the uh, inner cavity of a rim um, when the valve stem or rim tape has released sealant into the cavity. Given how hard it has been to clean off splatters from my frame, I have concerns that leaks would build up and you could maybe unbalance the rim or whatever. Um, there is actually like sealant remover. Like you can get uh, products that remove sealant uh, that are designed to do it. So yeah, I've like got the Silka sealant remover here. Um, 
just a useful product for specifically cleaning rims and stuff and getting sealant off. Also useful when you've had a puncture and it's been like Bishop when he's fighting the uh, Queen Alien at the end of Aliens and it's like spray stuff all over your frame. Um, it's good for removing it, just wiping off your frame. Uh, so yeah, sealant remover. Uh, next one, Roger Furness says, is the process for setting a brand new chain length on a one by drivetrain the same as for a two by drivetrain, i.e. the round chain ring on the largest chain ring and the largest rear sprocket plus two links? So yeah, we have uh, done videos on how to set the correct chain length, so make sure you check out those how-to videos. But yes, that is my go-to method as well. You, you thread the chain around, but not through the derailleur, and then you just add on two links. You can do that method for one by two, but there is a caveat in that if you're running like a, say a gravel bike drivetrain, where you've got like a mullet, yeah? So you've got like a massive cassette at the back with like a 44 tooth on or something. Um, then in that instance, um, it's often recommended that you would add four links instead of two. So same process, but just add four instead of two. So yeah, bear, um, bear that in mind. And different drivetrains vary as well. So when people start using oversized pulley wheel systems, they sometimes add in a couple more links for that as well. So the best advice is, is maybe if you're not sure, do it four links, keep it a bit longer. And then once it's set up and you've got it in the stand, do, do the visual test, see where the rear derailleur is, is actually hanging like when it's in the smallest sprocket and the biggest sprocket and see if the chain is too short that way um, because you know there might be specific things in each individual bike so yeah just bear that in mind and check that your chain isn't sagging of course which is a telltale sign if it's too long um, right that is all we've got time for this week so uh, if we haven't answered your question or I haven't answered your question this week sorry about that um, but keep plugging away get them get them in there be persistent and yeah we do our best to get get around to them eventually. So I'll see you in the next one with Alex. Love you, bye.